So here, when I run the wizard, if I'm authenticated in with Sentry, it'll go ahead and automatically detect my projects so that I can select which project I want to be integrated into. And here we go, select this one. And now, bam, we've been set up. That's all it takes here. So I already had it set up. And if, if you already have those files, it'll go ahead and produce these underscore files that you can go ahead and merge in as you need to. But let me go ahead over each part of this code here. So first, let's start with the client here. So you can see sentry.init, we're importing the SDK. And here's the DSM set up for that project and trace the sample rate 1.0 as we want 100% of transactions sent up to Sentry for this demo. Server is going to be identical. <laughs> Same thing. So just importing the SDK and then specifying how we want to sample and any other Sentry init configs that we would want here. We see Sentry properties, which has our credentials, our projects, our auth token, and all of that other good stuff we want to put it in there. And lastly, in nextconfig.js, what we'll see here is our previous exports, and then with Sentry config, and also with Sentry webpack plugin options. So what we're doing here is wrapping this with the Sentry config, and also including the Sentry webpack, so that we can get source maps and any other stuff uploaded in with Sentry. And we're doing this all under the hood. So when you call yarn build, all of this is going to be done. Source maps are going to be uploaded. It'll read from any config files that we would need. And bam, we're set up to, to, to you know, get a production pipeline set up, get this out. If there's any errors, if there's a, if there's slow performance, we're going to be know about all this stuff through the events and events actions. So this is all it takes just to kind of recap this. NPM install or yarn install the plugin, and then the wizard, which will generate the appropriate sentry init configs, and then Go ahead and wrap accordingly in next config.js, also specifying webpack there and some credentials and sentry properties. And if you want to do any server side stuff, go ahead and wrap the handler here with, with sentry as well. So that's it here. As I mentioned, now we want to get this to production. I don't want to just mess around on localhost here. Let's get this out there uh, and, and get it in front of folks and, and try to do this as one click and see what is possible. So I'm going to go ahead and get this onto Netlify. We have the docs over here, should be over here. And now what the build plugin will do, and I'll hand it over to Ramin shortly to, to demo all uh, the, the Netlify side of things, is we'll get the source map uploaded to Sentry and all the release management stuff. And one of my favorite features here is it will configure commits and all of that good stuff where we can identify the suspect commit, the suggested assignee. So when something goes wrong within Sentry on, uh, on the error generating an issue, we'll know who introduced it and who best to fight that fire here. So Ramin, you mind uh, helping me get my code to production and going over uh, the Netlify side of things and uh, then we can kind of trigger an error and, and go through the whole workflow. Lovely, let's get into it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, what we're gonna do is, as Neil mentioned, we're going to take our project and deploy the Git repository that Neil was sharing, which has our Next.js application, and we're going to deploy it to the web. Um, Netlify is a platform that has a CI, CD infrastructure under it um, and allows you to build your sites from your Git repository um, and uh, uploads your entire site to our multi-cloud uh, CDN, which is specifically built and optimized for front-end applications. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started uh, and with uh, deploying a brand new application in this workflow. Uh, so in this option, uh, in this configuration, right now we're using a GitHub uh, repository. Uh, so we'll go ahead and check against the GitHub API and in this specific repo, I think we have Sentry in the name. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click it and find that project. Um, I have an option to deploy additional branches within this project um, and configure my build uh, to the specific uh, rec configurations. Like if I need to add additional environment variables to let my project run, uh, for instance, if I need to do uh, Sentry auth token and add that to my project. Um, I can go ahead and uh, do that here as well. Uh, just copying it from another screen. Cool. So or uh, from the get-go, I'm able to uh, upload the necessary information that Sentry is going to need um, to, to, to run my project. Uh, 
And uh, this is going to allow my build process to capture um, and upload all of my source maps to Sentry during the build step. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy site. Um, and what Netlify is doing for you now is spinning up that build infrastructure. Um, and it's creating uh, and installing all the dependencies that your project may need. Um, and then it's going to create the static assets and then eventually it's going to upload it to the multi-cloud CDN. While that's working, let me uh, cover a couple of things about this build infrastructure and, and kind of developer workflow. Um, the deploy uh, settings, we're able to configure additional uh, environments that we can uh, potentially deploy as well. So one of the benefits of Netlify's developer productivity platform is that you can deploy unlimited environments um, for your project. So you can test your code out ahead of time as well before your code makes it well into production. You can work with Netlify and Sentry to identify a lot of those uh, bad code before it makes it out into production. And the way you can do that is give each developer their own environment to mess around with, to create code and to break things. You can either deploy all of your additional Git branches in a, from a Git repository, or you can specify specific environments and kind of make it feature 2021, uh, you know, times, uh, whatever your release may be. So you can add unlimited environments and it's all Git centric. As you saw, we were able to easily spin up our code base from a Git repository, build it. Um, and Netlify ties in all of that serverless functionality uh, so that if you need to make API calls to third-party systems, it's all tied into that Git-based centric workflow. You don't need to deploy serverless functions elsewhere. Um, on, on that workflow, that was kind of quick high level, but uh, where Sentry comes into play and connects with Netlify is through the plugins mechanism, right? So right now, Netlify identified that we have a Next.js application that we deployed through the Git repository and it auto-installed our uh, kind of essential Next.js package. We also want to install our Sentry plugin. So uh, let me go ahead and search for that. And I'm going to install this. It's a one-click install. Our latest site that we deployed already shows up at the top of the list. And I can go ahead and click install. Now, every single build that I have on the specific site, it's going to use environment variables that I attach to the specific project. And it's going to uh, upload all of those source maps uh, to, uh, to, uh, to Sentry. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at one of the projects we have already deployed that me and Neil have been uh, kind of gotten, gotten up ahead of time. As Neil mentioned, this is that similar project. It's already been deployed. We have multiple environments associated with it as well. So we can go into the production environment. We see we have our main branch and we have our intro logic environment as well, right? Uh